Hello, I'm Connie Rotella, and welcome to our Triple Thread Podcast. I'm super excited to begin this journey with all of you. Are you ready to put your best foot forward and show up with confidence? This tool is here to help you evolve into the artist you are meant to be. Just always remember to believe, become, and be ready. Add a new skill set or refine what you already know. So here we go. Je vous présente la belle Maxime Roy. I assisted to the casting workbook interview where you said you don't like to be on screen. But can you share with us that feeling and why after so many years you have such a hard time? I hate watching myself. I don't think a lot of people like watching themselves. I, I, you kind of, you have to remember that it's not you, it's somebody else. And, but it's still, I, I don't know. I still, it's not just physically, it's the choices that I make. And I go, ah, I should have said it that way. I should have done that. I should have looked at that, you know, at that point I should have turned. So I kind of question my choices, my acting choices when I'm watching also and criticizing myself like ugh, you know it's just it's hard it's hard to it's hard to age on screen so when you've been doing this for a long time you I don't think I'd have such a problem if if it wasn't for social media I think people are incredibly mean <laughs> I'm not gonna lie I think social media is horrible for um for actors and and public personalities because people are just they just compare you constantly and you know i have people writing oh i remember you in Billy boys or something which was 23 years ago and then they compare you like what happened well it was 23 years ago like i lost my baby fat i've aged like stop you know like and people just you know, put that in your face constantly and it's, it's hard. And if it wasn't for social media, I don't think we'd be aware of it as much, but since we have access to fans and people have access to you, then, you know, I, I control my social media. A lot of people don't, and they have people doing that for them. I do it myself. So it's hard. I mean, you look beautiful. You still look stunning and the camera loves you. Yes, it's hard, but you're one of the lucky ones. It still looks great on camera. Well, thank you. It's a lot of work. I, <laughs> <laughs> I love the whole aspect of filmmaking and storytelling. So I do look at the cinematography and I look at the lighting and the, the music and the editing. So my, my brain functions in that way as well. And I've been doing it for such a long time that I kind of analyze a lot of things at the same time. But it happens that I just am totally, you know, totally get into it and not think of anything. You have to do your homework and find something and make a choice and find something that you can link it to. And, and don't expect, don't expect writers to give you backstories on your characters. Build yourself one, do it yourself. Show up with an idea, a proposition, a choice, because often enough, they haven't thought about it. So, and when you learn lines, that really helps you because then you're connected to something that makes sense. Comment perso au Québec? Écoute, um, c'est tough, c'est vraiment tough, mais si tu as fait du théâtre, moi je te dirais, si tu peux jouer au théâtre, c'est une bonne façon de te faire voir. Et c'est une bonne façon d'avoir le respect de l'industrie. C'est um, comme plus, tu es plus respecté quand, as fait, quand tu fais du théâtre. En partant. Je pense que si tu peux te faire voir dans, au, au théâtre, c'est une, une super belle porte. Do you want to like start from um, how you started into this industry? I wanted to be, uh, I wanted to go to theater school and I was um, rehearsing to uh, audition for National Theater School, Canada Ligue Nationale. And, uh, and then I just, I, I got an agent at the same time to do commercials because back then, I don't know if it's still the case, but when you were under, I don't know, 20, and you could do commercials and not be a member of UDA, Union des Artistes. So I got an, I got, um, an agent, and well, an agent approached me because my, also my three older brothers were actors. So <laughs> she was like, well, if they can act, she probably can because her three brothers are actors. So she took me on, but I was like, I'm going to do auditions for commercials and make money to pay for a national theater school. 
but she sent me to like real roles and I started booking. So that's how I started. Um, and I was, I was really lucky, but I booked a lead when I was 20 on a big epic period piece that was shot in film, which was amazing. It was a million dollars per episode, a million in Quebec that you can't, you don't see that anymore. So I've, I'm so lucky that I got to see that and, and, and live that. It was so beautiful. But um, so that was my first lead. And then I never went to theater school. And I kind of regret it today. You regret it? Why? I think there's um, a level of respect for theater actors that you kind of never really get if yeah. you don't go. Yes. You know? There's yeah. like an aura around theater actors. Like they're real artists. They're not, you know, so, and it follows you. And I wanted to have that aura. I wanted to, and I loved theater, but I was lucky enough to actually do theater, even if I didn't go to theater school, but it wasn't the same. I, I always felt like I was missing something. You know, the English Canada is not the same way, but it's more in Quebec is so, it's so closed off. It is really hermetic, you know. Mm -hmm. um, that when you go to theater school, it's easier. Right. And it's funny you say that because I've been on Clubhouse recently and every single casting director say that it's easier to cast a theater actor and put them on TV than a television actor to put them in theater. So when you're on set a lot, you're kind of always practicing your art compared to other people that are waiting to get on set. So what do they do? They have to keep taking classes and they have to keep training. You're always practicing. You're always like warming up. Like a dancer always warms up. Well, you're doing that all the time. So the ones that are waiting for that one moment, what are your suggestions of, of how to prepare for that day that it happens to them? Well, in the olden days, there used to be workshops. Every weekend there was somebody like, a, you know, a famous um, director or a coach that would come and And we, that's what I did when I wasn't working, when I was starting out, I just, I went and got some tools that I didn't get, that I didn't have, that I felt I didn't have. And I would do workshops and keep, you know, keep practicing, keep, it's kind of like an athlete. You kind of always have to be ready to do something, yeah. you know, and Yeah, it's really funny because when you're on IMDb and you, you kind of fill out, you, there's a whole thing like your special skills and you, you fill those out and you're like, okay, I can, I can do this. I can do this accent. I can do that accent and be serious and be really able to do it because they actually call you out mm -hmm. when you, you know, you can actually be called to do a, a, a Scandinavian, I don't know, that's not an accent, but uh, a <laughs> South African accent. Right. which is really hard. That's a hard one to do. Um, so you have to be ready. So just like keep, have some tools. Yeah. You know, this is the mindset that we need to have. You want it. You are. It's not you are or you, you're not. If you're in the States, that's how big it is because the competition is much bigger. Right. What's the difference of working in the States and what is the difference working here? Well, uh, the difference is the level of, yeah, the competition is way high. What level do you have to be to call yourself an artist? You're just an artist. You're, you are, you are that. It's a state of being. That's who you are. It's not, you don't need a certificate to be called an actor. You don't. Don't, I mean, it's good to have one, but in you, it, like inside yourself and how you feel about yourself and what you believe in yourself, you don't need a certificate to, to be called an actor. But, and then coming back to the States, Um, you know, it's way more a business in the States, I would say, than here. I think what's great about Montreal is that it is such a cultural city and you do feel that art prevails. It still does. I mean, it's, it's changing. I feel the industry is changing a lot, but it's art is more important than the business yeah. in Montreal. And in the States, it's kind of the other way around <laughs> unless you're in New York and you're doing Broadway and yeah. you're doing but um it's more of a business you know Los Angeles is a business town yeah, yeah. it's there are palm trees and sunshine you kind of mistake it for Cancun it's not it's a business city and it's stressful the competition is heavy 
and it's cutthroat <laughs> and you got to be you got to be on your game all the time and and it's it's tough it's really tough mm -hmm. nothing comes easy i was raised with three older brothers and they're much older than i am and they were very macho and my dad was very macho god rest his soul and he knew that i he i'm not you know he he knows he knows what i thought and um it was hard because i had to learn to uh, voice my opinion if something wasn't fair he would say it and that's the one great thing he taught me is to say when something's not fair <laughs> and then you get in this business on sets and you can see a lot of things that are not fair when i started out i used to go hey don't you know i used to voice my opinion which was a huge mistake and that caused me a lot of problems now you get told that you know by your agent you can't say that you can't i know it's not fair and i know you're right but this is a business you can't say and then you get older and you kind of go okay i'm not going to say anything i'm not kind of kind of you know scratches on the inside a bit you're you're you kind of go, i have to shut up i can't say anything i can't i can't um it, it eats your soul at some point you know what i mean like it, it is hard and there are a lot of people that are in it for the right reasons but once when you get to those the other ones that are not that can hurt and you know so you do compromise your um integrity at times and then you have to choose your battles so you have to be you have to have a great environment and you have people that you need people to talk to when you get home at night and go i can't believe this happened and i can't say anything and it's horrible but yeah so it's hard to it's a fine line you know it's a really fine line it's amazing how many things we do for the love of it and for the passion of it but at the same time there's a lot of things that are the opposite of what we think we're going into being a young artist in, in in the business right canada it's hard i mean it's hard everywhere but um yeah the, the star system big brackets there are no star system in english canada it's 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 really it's changing slowly very very slowly but the recognition is not you have to work your ass off i love being on a set it's the most amazing exhilarating thing for me to be creating character and telling a story being surrounded by a bunch of people that want to tell the same story that's exhilarating for me and i remember being really emotional when i said it so that's where i think when you don't have that anymore even when you're not working and you're in a pandemic by yourself in an apartment with your cat, but you still can have that, that passion, that's a good sign. Go when you lose that, I think you should question maybe doing something else, but it really has to come for, from a very deep love of what you do and, and the art itself. So what keeps you going is that passion that lives inside of you. You cannot destroy that. If that passion lives inside of you. And yes, you should question it if that passion is not there, because if you're waiting for that phone call, you're always going to be waiting for someone to make you happy, right? Yeah. I, I get happy if I'm watching a, a series. Yeah. You know, I just watched um, uh, I May Destroy You a month ago. That was the last one that I, I watched that I would, and I would just get up and just like walk around and go, oh my God, it's so good. It's so fucking good and I got so excited about it and I think you have to be excited about just other projects too yeah. and just know that that's like you're like oh my god that's what I want to do that's the kind of show I want to be in and something that's powerful and has a message and you know and and that's a good sign so I still have that <gasps> excitement of which goes back to the question of you know, do you analyze everything, which that was one that I didn't analyze ever, anything. Like I was just like in, in the story and the actors were so, it was just brilliant. Il y a quelqu'un qui m'a dit de Anthony Hopkins, qui a travaillé avec Anthony Hopkins un jour, qui a dit, how do you do it? What makes you, what makes you so fucking good? He said, well, Anthony Hopkins, dans toute son humilité, just make every moment a moment. 
Puis ça, ça m'a toujours resté, tu sais, sans faire une pause dramatique pour rendre comme un moment interminable. Mais make the moment a moment. Yeah. Inside you. And it's good. Puis ça va transparaître, tu sais, même si tu as 4-5 lignes, tu sais. If you really believe in it, if you're really present, make a moment and it's gonna, it's gonna come out and, and just be open to anything to, and you know, what the director is going to tell you, just be, just be open to it and enjoy it because mm -hmm. if you enjoy it, yeah, that's going to show and you will look confident and that's attractive. Écoute, quand j'ai fait les boys, là, ouais. j'avais 25 ans, OK? <laughs> Puis là, j'étais arrivée ma première journée, j'étais terrifiée. Il y avait toutes les plus grosses, les, les plus gros humoristes <rire> au Québec qui était là. Il y avait Patrick Cuard, il y avait tout le monde qui était là. Marc Messier dans ce temps-là, bon. Et j'ai mon personnage qui est une waitress hyper sexy, hyper, j'étais déjà vraiment mal à l'aise d'être habillée de même. Et là, je suis à la table avec toute les, cette gang-là, ils sont dix. Et j'ai ma première réplique, puis je ne l'ai pas, là, ça ne marche pas. Là. Je ne l'ai pas, j'ai comme tout ce que j'avais fait en audition, ça ne marche pas. Et Louis Seya, qui avait écrit, qui était un maître de la comédie à l'époque, me prend de côté puis fait Tu sais quoi la différence entre toi et ces gars-là Les autres, ils ont de l'expérience, puis toi, t'en as pas. C'est pas une question de talent, c'est juste une question d'expérience. Fait que c'est juste ça la différence. I want to thank you for taking the time to come and speak to these students, Maxime.